Over the last uh, four years, I've been privileged enough to travel pretty much to every corner of this country, Kenya. And, you know, Kenya is a big country. It's like number 47 when it comes to landmass. And uh, when it comes to population, Kenya is like number 27. So yeah, it's a pretty huge company and I've been privileged enough to be able to travel to almost all corners of this country. And uh, a lot of that inspired me to get into photography and because of that I managed to take almost like I don't know my google photo says I have more than 30,000 photos so I decided I'm going to do a selection of uh, several photos that I think are my best pictures and show you guys and also you know talk about them and maybe the thought process when I was taking those photos so since I'm going to be doing a lot of talking maybe let me quickly make some purple tea and then we get started so this is what I'm going to need to make the purple tea. So this is the purple tea itself. I got them from Gatura Greens, which is a farm where you can go and do like a tea farm tour. It was pretty good. Unfortunately, I didn't make a video about it. But yeah, that's the purple tea. And instead of using sugar, you use uh, hibiscus. So we're going to mix these two things using uh, this. Okay, let's get started. Yeah, well, this one is still uh, brewing. It's going to take maybe like another two minutes for it to be concentrated enough. So photo number one, this is a picture that I took back in uh, 2015. And I'd say this is probably my most popular picture because I uploaded it on a stock photography website called, I think it was Pixabay. And over the years, I've seen it being used, you know, in so many different occasions. I've seen it being used even by the United Nations Environmental Program. And that was during uh, the COVID period. Maybe they wanted a picture that showcases Nairobi, you know. And uh, this picture to me perfectly summarizes Nairobi because, you know, as they say, Nairobi can just be like total chaos. But if you live here, then, you know, it's organized chaos. And if you look at this picture, there's a lot going on. If you just zoom in a bit, you'll see it's 5 p.m. So this is peak rush hour time. And you can see all these matatus, you know, just along the street. And uh, yeah, I've been using this road for so many years. I used to stay in Umoja. So this picture, to make sense of it, there's a section here which will be where the Umoja matatus are, where I'm zooming in. And further down, that will be where the matatus that go to Gidurai are. This other side, I think, is matatus that go to Komarok. Uh, yeah, there's a karate place, there's a gym. And actually, there used to be a cyber cafe here, which I used to go to a lot when I was in college. I didn't have a computer, a laptop, or anything, really. So I used to go to a cyber cafe here to type all my projects and whatever. So instead of having to deal with all this traffic, I could sit there from, like, you know, when classes end, let's say at 5 p.m. and I'll be there till like uh, 7.30 so that I can easily go home when there is not much traffic. So yeah, this picture to me summarizes Nairobi pretty much. Uh, yeah, Tuskies, that is a supermarket chain that has currently failed. It doesn't exist anymore. There's adverts on this side. You know, there's people walking along the streets. You know, as in it's just a picture that... <laughs> fully shows you what Nairobi really is and uh, the beauty of it is the sharp contrast when you go to like uptown which is only like what less than 500 meters away and you have the KCC building which from the top you can see these are uh, almost calmness to Nairobi you can see the high-rise buildings not much going on and uh, this is a picture also took I think back in 2017 and this will be the recent picture and here again Almost the same thing, but the only difference you can see here is uh, the new expressway that came up and maybe a few more buildings and that's pretty much it. So yeah, this to me will be my 
one of my top pictures just because of how you know chaos chaotic it looks and again it's a good reminder of what nairobi actually is yeah let's move on to the second one which is not so far from the first one actually that is uh the nairobi national park and here i'd say I'm, I'm actually torn i'm not sure which 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 picture i'd selected as my favorite and that's the thing with pictures you know i might look at this picture today and be like oh i really love this picture but then one year down the line you're like no i think i've changed my mind to something different but yeah both of them are quite similar and uh, and you know this picture if you look at it a giraffe and in the background is the nairobi high-rise buildings so you know nairobi national park as they say is the only national park that is close to a city which i mean it's less than 10 kilometers away from the city and it's a completely different environment it's very calm very serene there's even tsetse flies which can bite you you know there's some sections where there's no even a, a mobile network and you know it's just a completely different world and this one i also like this picture with the two giraffes with the nairobi skyline you know at the back and also there's like a plane up there because uh, wilson airport is not so far from here there's just an airport close by um yeah this one is a family of ostriches again same theme yeah this is probably one of the most popular pictures that people like taking of an animal with the cityscape uh, behind them so yeah that's why i think most of the pictures that i took from nairobi national park lean on that side i've always wanted to get a rhino you know like a rhino standing there and then uh, the background is uh, the skyline so yeah hopefully i'll do that one day since nairobi national park it's close by and it's also affordable i'd say to visit and uh, yeah there's so many animals out of the big five animals the only thing missing is actually elephants because it's a small national park but yeah it's one of my favorite national parks i always tell people to visit nairobi national park if they haven't and that will be number two so number two that will be this i think at this point at the end i'm just going to do a slideshow of the top 15 because i've selected the first 15. so yeah let's go to number three and this is a picture that i took uh, in an event uh, the event was called a uh, piano fest that was in 2021 so you know i'm a piano genre that is from south africa and uh, it was during covid time there was actually a curfew at that time so you could only go back home you should, the, the event should, should only last up to i think it was 7 p.m or 8 p.m and everyone should be at home by 11 p.m so yeah during the event i was able to take several pictures of people just having fun like i really like this picture with the lady with her tongue out you know <laughs> it just shows the facial expressions of people when they're dancing i like this picture of this guy with the makeup that he did and uh yeah i like this lady's outfit it was uh, very you know uh, I like the contrast it had, so I like the picture. And yeah, people were just having fun. But then there's a lady who approached me and was like, oh, can I take a picture? And at that time, I didn't know even she's uh, like a professional model. Uh, I think her name is Sharon. I'm going to show you just her feed, Instagram feed, so that you can just have a feel of her profile. So she's, you know, like next level professional. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, okay, fine, let me just take a picture. But yeah, I'd say this was my favorite picture like you know it's it encompasses the feeling of the event if that makes any sense i'm, I'm trying to use big words here <laughs> but yeah you know uh, i used a sony camera for this i haven't actually talked about the camera settings but yeah i used a sony camera for this i think i had a 15 millimeter lens with the sony a6400 that means it's a crop sensor so 1.5 so the 50 millimeter lens on a crop sensor on, on the sony crop sensor lens that will be 75 millimeters and yeah i'd say you know it was sharp i really liked how it turned out I, I didn't do much editing maybe just shifted some of the color tones and i think that was it and then there is this second picture where she's looking dead straight on the camera again i love this picture and then the third one where i wanted to get like a full body picture uh, there was this guy who I also thought was, um, I, I think he's a model considering the instructions he was giving me on, you know, how he wants to pose, which, you know, I haven't taken pictures of people a lot, but yeah, uh, you know, I appreciate all those to like learn about something like that. So yeah, I, I like the picture and I also like this one where it was a close range. Uh, yeah, he's, you know, totally buffed, 
something definitely i don't think i'll ever get to this point so yeah <laughs> uh but yeah those two pictures i think to me summarize that event when it comes to the you know people having fun part of it but then now the artist started coming and one of the headliners of that uh show her name is uh, Camofella who if you listen to my piano you definitely definitely know her so first i took pictures of other kenyan artists uh like this one of Kagwe Mungai you know he's a very I, I think most of the times whenever you see him that's how he dresses with very bright colors and i think it takes a person who has style to be able to achieve these otherwise you might end up clashing badly uh, I like I really like this picture. It almost made me feel like I should become an event <laughs> photographer, but yeah, definitely not. Uh yeah, and this picture of Viri the I think his name is Inviri or Viri, Inviri the storyteller. You know, uh yeah, ladies love him, so yeah, people were screaming and shouting and uh, yeah, now this is my favorite picture from that event of Kamofela. I mean, they say an artist a perfect artist has to be a good artist yes you can sing but you also need to be someone who can perform and again due to the covid restrictions she only performed for i'd say 15 minutes or 20 minutes and at that time she was still i don't call her like an upcoming artist but she was still you know she didn't have that many songs but the few songs that she played and how she just dominated that stage was next level i'd say in 2021 of all the performances i saw actually even since then for the several concerts that i've been to nobody has matched her energy so yeah this was top class performance for just 15 minutes again and you can see her jumping there with the two backup dancers it was next level like everyone was so happy about this and yeah i got this picture where she was like looking dead straight at the camera and you know i really liked it also yeah, and that is the third picture. So this will be my favorite picture from that day. Like, you know, it just shows you the spirit of a piano, really, because it's a very, you know, hyper type of music where with the beats and the drums and all that. And, you know, yeah, so that is number four. So my favorite picture number four is that, again, I'm going to show all the 15 pictures in one slide at the end. And now let's go to number five and this picture i took it during uh, when i was shooting my documentary which if you haven't seen you still should see it even though it's from 2021 um yeah we were driving to lake uh, bogoria and on this day we actually got lost because uh i i can't even remember what happened but yeah there was one road during this time a lot of the lakes along the rift valley were flood actually not i'd say they were over flooded you know so there were some sections where you couldn't access because the roads were just covered with water. And uh, finally we got to, you know, the National Park and when we were just driving down, uh, yeah, it was just a striking picture that presented itself. You can see the lake down there and then, yeah, I just, you know, pulled myself out of, not really pulled myself out, but I just opened the window and then, uh, you know, holding the camera, I took the snapshot. It's actually a wide photo, but I reframed it and, you know, made it to be what it is i didn't do much editing on this apart from maybe reducing the brightness a bit and increasing the contrast i think that's the only thing i did uh, the camera i used i think it was a canon uh, no a nikon yeah it was a nikon d3400 so you know an entry level camera but with the kit lens i can't even remember what lens it was but yeah i just loved like bogoria like bogoria like baringo i always confuse those two lakes because they are close to each other or, you know, they are just uh, separated with maybe like a stretch of two kilometers. And actually during this time, they were almost joining both lakes. So yeah, this picture is my favorite from Lake uh, Bogoria. <laughs> and yeah, this is the wider frame of it. So, you know, it, the lake itself is like in between two mountains. It's stunning, trust me, like even these pictures are not doing it justice. And yeah, you can see this one with flamingos. Yeah, Lake Bogota is famous for flamingos. There's like thousands of flamingos anytime you go there. And there's also hot springs, which I don't know if there's any hot spring in this frame. Uh, not really. So 
but yeah these hot springs so the water is boiling hot like more than i don't know 100 degrees i'd say considering what i can boil beyond 100 degrees but yeah uh, then you'll see some flamingos you know that have died just next to the hot spring because maybe they went to drink water from it and then it's too hot it died they died uh, but yeah lake bogoria standing 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 uh, national park um, you can drive there you can camp and also I don't think you can do a boat ride. I've never actually seen a boat ride in Lake Bogoria. Maybe if you know of any boat rides, you can comment down below to inform guys. And next to Lake Bogoria is Lake Baringo, where I also took one picture that I really, really, really love of uh, this guy. I, th I think his name was Matthias. No, not no Matthias. I'm confusing the name. Um, but yeah, this picture, this is my favorite picture from Lake Bogoria, Lake Baringo. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep confusing these two places. But yeah, Lake Baringo, now the interest, or rather the fascinating thing about Lake Baringo was this boat the guy is on. So these boats are handmade, and uh, you can see his legs are actually inside the water. And then he's paddling with just a plastic, uh, like if you take a jerry can and then you cut the jerry can into two, and then you try to create like a flat surface so that you use that to paddle. And that was it. And uh, yeah. So he, he just came back from fishing and then I managed to chat with him for a while. There's a video about that, you can check it out. Um, yeah, this boat is fascinating and, and I think my fascination with this boat, if you look in this second picture, is uh, this lake has so many crocodiles, like there's thousands of crocodiles in these lakes and hippos. But he was saying the crocodiles are friendly, they almost never attack uh, people. But there's a other side where the crocodiles are not friendly, they can attack people. and. You know, I don't know how I feel about that. Personally, I don't think I'd ever trust a wild animal to be friendly, ever. I don't care where it is. I prefer to, uh, you know, stay away. But, yeah, so these boats, they were fascinating. I even keep thinking one day I should go back and try to do like a video on how they build or how they create this boat from scratch, which, you know, I think it will be fascinating. And... Uh, yeah, uh, we managed to buy some fish, I think, from, was it from him or from someone else? Then when you get that fish, you can throw it in the water and then a fish eagle comes and tries to grab it. And that's how I got this picture of the fish eagle. Again on this, again on this I was using the Sony A6400 with the 50mm lens. With that camera, I only had two lenses, the 50mm and the 16mm lens. So on that camera, it means it's a 24mm, again because of the crop factor. And yeah, I love this picture of the fish eagle. I wish I had a longer range, maybe something like a 150 millimeter lens, 200 millimeter. I'm sure this would have been an epic photo, which is very sharp. But still, with what I had, I was happy with that. But yeah, this will be my favorite picture. Yeah, it's a stunning picture. And I really want to go back and build those boats and maybe even ride that boat. Uh, on the lake but nowhere close to the crocodiles that i am not doing i'm not that confident um number seven oh wait my tea is ready now that's yeah that is the purple tea it's but i think what gives it the purple color is the hibiscus not really the tea itself um yeah i'll just put that there mm, it's really good yeah, you should check out Gitaru Gardens. I mean, it's a very nice place. For Kenyans, I think it costs... Uh, actually, the cost is uh, the same for foreigners and Kenyans. So it's like 3,000 shillings. And then you they provide a meal. And then they also do like a small tour of the farm. And also there's a place where you can go where there's a waterfall. I can quickly show those pictures and then we go back to the other pictures left. Okay, number seven. And number seven is Mount Longonot. And my favorite picture, I think I'll go direct to my favorite picture first. That will be this picture of, I, I don't know them, it was a father and a son. We talked only for like a few minutes, but then I took the picture. And, you know, the kid is overlooking the uh, crater. And further on the mountain, you can see uh, over the distance, that is Zabadeas. Zabadeas is like 4,500 meters high. So, you know, that's a proper high mountain and long or not here at the top is uh, 2700 meters high so again it's also quite high 
And yeah, I mean, that was just a picture that presented itself. <laughs> when I saw them seated there, I just thought, wow, that's actually, yeah. I, I think actually it's Sam who noticed it first. Uh, if you watch my videos a lot, you know Sam already. I think he's the one who noticed it first and was like, oh, that would be a good frame. Then yeah, I took the picture. Um, yeah, on this day, that is my friend Edgar. We were going to climb the mountain and then my friends that, that I was with decided, you know, it's a good day to drink. And who am I to stop them from drinking? Personally, I don't drink, but yeah, I told them that sounds like a very bad idea considering we are going to climb a mountain that we are going to gain like 900 meters elevation. And they thought they can do it. And yeah, so there they are drinking. That's Michelle and some cheersing. Is that a word? Cheersing? I don't know if it's really a word. I don't think. But yeah, guys were drinking. Uh, Michelle also makes videos. She's currently in France doing some videos over there, which are cool. I'll leave her channel on the description below. You can check it out. But yeah, guys were drinking. Well, on the positive side, they all we all managed to get to the top. And here is a picture of me next to the sign. And yeah, something to note. Those shoes are 100% black. So you can imagine how dusty that place is. Yeah, you can even see my legs. <laughs> yeah, my shoes are supposed to be the same color as the socks but yeah a very very dusty place yeah after climbing mount longonaut actually on this day i was annoyed because i lost all the footage from this trip because i don't know i misplaced my memory card so that was a good learning curve um after that we went to oloiden campsite and we camped there that is after coming down the mountain and i really love this picture from the next day when you know i just opened my tent and then you know it it was just calm next to Lake Naivasha. Uh, it's called Lake Oloiden. Lake Oloiden and Lake Naivasha are close to each other. But most times when it's the rainy season, they actually connect and forms like one huge lake. And uh, yeah, this picture, I think this picture, it's Sam who took this picture. I also really love this picture. Uh, with all of us having our camping tents. It's early morning. It was maybe around 8 a.m. You know, we were just chilling, thinking, oh, what do we do next? And uh, yeah, I, I really loved this trip. It was a very good trip. Uh, after this, we went to, we drove to um, Hell's Gate National Park. And then we drove out from the other side. So this was a quick uh, two days trip. We went like, let's say on a Friday, and then we were back on a Saturday. So Friday morning, we leave Nairobi, go all the way to Longonot, climb up the mountain, down, go to the campsite and just chill. And then the next day we exited the national park. Let's move to the next one, number eight. Um, th this picture, for me to take this picture, it was an event. It was a government event, even to make things worse. Like, you know, dealing with the government is just something else. So it was an event by Kenya National Highway Association, Kenha and they were building a trauma center so there's a road which they built but then that road has so many accidents so they were building like a hospital for you know people who get accidents can be treated there and uh yeah one of the guests of honors was the former prime minister that is uh raila odinga so you know well he's a controversial figure in kenya you either love him or hate him i, I really find people who are in the middle and so I would be political with this. But yeah, I took this picture. I mean, at the end of the day, I think, I still think he's an important person in this country. And uh, yeah, I'd say I was privileged to be able to be this close to him and take this picture. You know, I was just like running around, taking thousands of pictures while all the other press guys were in one section standing there. Then later on, I'm like, wait, why are these people just standing in one section? And here I am moving up and down. But yeah, well, he wasn't the client. Kenha was the client. So, which again, if you really want to do business with the government, unless you're wealthy, please don't. You, we, after doing this job, we took us almost more than one year before we got paid. So, <laughs> think about it before you take such jobs, especially if you're going to invest a lot of money. Consider, lucky for us, we had all our gear and everything. So, you know, we just went and back, and that was it. So, apart from the fuel expense. I'd say we were fine. And yeah, this second picture I also liked of uh, the late Professor Magoha, who was the cabinet secretary of education. 
at one point he was said to be the most educated man in Kenya with the longest CV ever of more than 60 pages. He's a professor, he was a surgeon, he was this and that, he did like a million things honestly. <laughs> But I'd say with Magoha, the impressive thing about him was he was a very no-nonsense kind of person. Maybe didn't come up with the best policies, honestly. Well, I actually said I'm not going to be political about this. But yeah, uh, still, you know, he's a guy from what he did, you know, his impact in the education system is going to be felt for, you know, a few years to come. That's Raila, I think, with the deputy governor of Kisumu, and I don't know the other guy, you know. Of course, it's a political rally, people have to dance. And yeah, so that to me is my favorite picture of the event. You know, being able to uh, capture Raila that close and uh, Magoha also. And yeah, that's a plain picture of the hospital that they were building. Yeah, I think by now it's already done. So yeah, it's, it was a good initiative. And uh, oh, actually Raila was also like, you know, launching a new school, building classes and stuff. You know, it was during peak campaign season. so. Yeah, a lot of things were going on back and forth. So yeah, that is number eight. Let's move on to number nine. And that will be Mandera. Um, this is my favorite picture from Mandera. And oh yeah, I've talked a lot. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, this will be my favorite picture from Mandera. And... Uh, in itself, this picture is not really interesting. So I, you know, but the picture is interesting uh, because of the area. You know, Mandera is a. Uh, I mean, people from the U.S., the U.K. cannot travel to Mandera. Basically, people from the Western world, because uh, in Kenya it has always been classified as a no-go zone. You know, very dangerous place where there's a lot of uh, terrorist attacks. On the positive side, nowadays I think it has really declined, but. Yeah, so we were driving there, we were driving heading towards Mandera and then uh, the car we were on got a puncture and there's two times in my life when I was ready to, when I accepted my fate and just thought, you know, I'm ready to die. This was the second time. The first time was when I went to hike on Monsusua and there was no one and, you know, it's a wild place, there's wild animals and, you know, there wasn't any house close by. I think the closest house was like one kilometer away. And yeah, I was camping and then I could hear all these sounds of different animals. Some of them were very close by and then I just thought, you know what, I'm ready to, I'm, I, I, I mean, I was so afraid until the fear just left like my body and just felt like, ah, I have accepted my fate. If it comes down to it, I'm ready to die. <laughs> and it just was calm and actually after that I managed to sleep till morning. And the second time that happened was during this trip and this is... I think the power of stereotypes, you know, like we, as much as you might want to come out of a stereotype, we've been fed so much about how Mandera is not a safe place. So as much as you know, the chances of me dying in a car accident in Nairobi is way higher than me dying in a terrorist attack. There's still that fear that lingers in your mind. And yeah, on this day, when we got this punch, I just thought, you know what? Maybe it's a setup. Maybe this is where I die. <laughs> so I had just accepted my fate. And you can see the road, you know, it's not like a very good road. And you can see this second picture, that's how the road looks like. And it goes on for miles, more than like a hundred miles on gravel. So it's it was a torturous journey, which I wouldn't advise anyone to do, honestly, unless you have to. And uh, I mean, there's this other time I went to Garissa, if you see this picture of this bus, and I think when it happened, but with Garissa it wasn't that bad. I was going to Wajir, so yeah, the bus stopped so that people can get off and pray because Muslims pray, pray at, I think it's 1 p.m. And yeah, again, the same kind of road. So this is the problem with North, Northeastern Kenya. Actually, I say the problem is most of the roads are not good. And that's why these terrorist attacks happen because, you know, it's easy to plant an IED in such a road compared to like, you know, a tarmac road, you know, normal bitum is it bitumen road, something like that. And yeah, so this picture might not be as interesting of a picture. Oh, a fascinating thing about this uh, puncture, these guys fixed this puncture in less than one minute, and I'm not even exaggerating it. From the moment we just had that bap, you know, it was just instant, and then those guys, the, the driver stopped immediately, there was a guy who came, who jumped, you know, from the front seat, 
went back, removed the tire. Someone was already, the driver was already jacking up the car and then someone, like it was so fast. I mean, these guys could do F1, you know, <laughs> tire changes in a record rate. But yeah, at maximum one minute, that's how long this, those guys took to fix this puncture and we are off. So yeah, you can imagine if they do it that fast, you can imagine about the security in the area. But yeah, that is number nine. And uh, number 10, five more to go. Don't worry. This is going to be a very long video. I'm already talk I've already talked for 31 minutes. Jeez, I'm not very big in food. Like personally, if someone was to be like, here's a pill. If you take this pill once every day, you'll never be hungry and you'll have all the nutrients you need. I don't think I'll really be eating because I don't know. I am a slow eater and I really hate eating. I not really hate eating, but I really... I, I food doesn't excite me like other people like I, I you know how people will see food and be like oh yeah this is the best thing ever I rarely get that to me food is just you know I don't want to die <laughs> but in Kenya this is my favorite food like undisputed I will clear this alone if I have to but yeah usually whenever I get this I'm maybe with like three people four people or two people and we go to these, uh, most of these hot restaurants are Somali restaurants. So, you know, uh, like in this picture, this is naan bread on one side. There's goat meat, there's chicken meat, there's rice, plain rice, there's biryani rice, there's some salad, there's some chicken made in some other way, there's peas. You know, it's just, you know, flavors and flavors. It's even making my mouth water. Maybe let me take a sip of my tea. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, this is, to me, this is perfect food, like very healthy. Everything here is 100% healthy, nothing, all organic, nothing is like processed or anything. And, you know, that tends to be a lot of the food that I like eating. And yeah, this is another one, but this one has fries. I rarely eat fries, but, you know, whatever. So maybe whoever I was with or if you we were a group, one person was like, I want fries. But again, same thing. Yeah, actually, this one doesn't even look. Why did we have two pilaus? Anyway, but yeah, this is my favorite picture of food in Kenya. Like this is, to me, is the undisputed food. Nothing comes close to it. The senior with all these assorted uh, foods. And number 11, only four more to go. Number 11 is Masai Mara. Masai Mara is referred to as the theater of life. I don't know if, I don't know who say that. Maybe I'm, I'm just making it up. I, I, yeah, I think it's, it was David Attenborough, someone who does like wildlife, something, something. Let's say Masai Mara is the theater of life, something like that. Masai Mara is a very famous national park, you know, both to Kenyans and foreigners. It's usually like a, a dream place where people want to go to see wildlife. You can see all the big five animals if you have the time. But for me, this picture, I think, is my favorite picture from Masai Mara with the cheetah just chilling there you know but you know before they were chilling actually the cheetahs were across the mara river if you see this picture there's two of them so they managed to swim across the river and then uh yeah in this picture it's not very clear but you can see the first cheetah looking back and then you can see the second one just coming out of the coming out of the ditch and then uh, i think they had spotted some was it i think it was antelopes or zebras so basically how they were walking, they looked like they wanted to hunt. And then there's some stupid guy with uh, Land Cruiser, those two, uh, two of them, who just, you know, he drove straight in front of them and blocked them. So I'm like, really? We were about to watch, you know, something spectacular. Then the guy just ruined the entire hunt like that. And personally, I think that's why I really, no, not really, yeah, I'd say I tend to hate uh, a lot of tour companies because most of them tend to lack discipline when it comes to how they you know drive their cars inside uh, the national parks you know they are always trying to drive like literally one meter away from the animal so if it's lions they'll drive right next to it during the wild beast migration you'll see them you know thousands of them getting right next to the animals and it really pisses me off so, you know, I, I mean, for them, basically, I think the assumption is they want to give their clients the best return value for money, considering these places are expensive. But, you know, I, I think there's better ways of doing it. So, yeah, if you're watching this and you're a tour, 
tour guide or you know you have one of those tour vans and you do that please stop you're ruining the experience for everyone else you know if you don't have a telephoto lens you know the big lenses just accept your fate like me on this occasion i think i had a 50 millimeter lens that is not a lens you go to shoot safari with but you know i'm still not going to get very close to an animal just to get a perfect picture um yeah if i need to i'll invest in like a 500 millimeter lens or you know a 400 millimeter lens but yeah uh, masai mara trust me it's hyped but it's one of those places that i say yes it's hyped but it's 100% worth it if you can visit it please do especially since in the next 10 20 years they say it's going to disappear because the mara river is drying out quickly and once that happens maybe a lot of the animals will remain on the other side of Tanzania the Serengeti which is like 10 times the size of Masai Mara so yeah sorry for my rant but yeah this picture of the cheetah is my favorite uh, actually my favorite wildlife picture maybe I should do a video on wildlife photography at some point number 12 this will be Lamu Lamu is I'd say it's my favorite or my second favorite place in Kenya to visit and yeah this picture of the sunset i mean everybody loves a, a good sunset or a sunrise personally i prefer sunsets because i don't have to wake up <laughs> but yeah once in a while i'll try to wake up for a sunrise and whenever i do it it tends to be worth it but yeah i prefer sunsets but yeah we were on a boat ride and you know i i don't even think i the only thing i edited on this picture was reducing the brightness i think and just adding a little bit of contrast to you know and yeah and maybe in reducing the shadows a bit so that it can you know be punchy and that was it i didn't do much and uh yeah i mean lamu is lamu if you've been to lamu it needs no explanation it's a perfect town one of the oldest towns in kenya more than 800 years old you know where the swahili culture has existed for all that time and you know it's there's a lot of history in lamu that you know it's just they are ready to be explored oh i have another picture that i tried to over edit which yeah i prefer the original one so another picture from lamu will be this one with the boats and i weirdly enough there's a time i zoomed in and then i saw that happy birthday kid so i think it was a birthday celebration for someone but yeah the three dogs just cruising on indian ocean you know lamu is it just has this serenity to it which is just beautiful then there's also this picture it's also from lamu uh, you know the kid jumping in the water and then there is a uh, dove uh, coming in at the back there's tourists who just arrived from the airport you know yeah i'd say this picture is a good vibe of lamu where it's a free place you know you do whatever you want very chill very secluded and yeah very relaxing <laughs> i i love lamu i love lamu i can stay in lamu 100% um i like this picture also that i took of this uh, fisherman like you know i, I cuz i looked at this fish and i thought that looks like plastic i think it's fake then yeah when he got close i actually saw even the markings you know where the hook you know punctured its skin and yeah it was an impressive picture so Yeah, Lamu Stone Town. Amazing place, amazing beauty. Definitely visit it if you can. And number 13. Uh number 13 again another wildlife picture and for this again I'm torn between two pictures. This this the first one which is, you know, a herd of elephants walking and then there's the second one which is probably most likely a bull elephant on its own which shows you the contrast of elephant because elephants tend to live together for more than even 30 years but then the male uh, there's an age where they reach and then they have to go out on their own but still once in a while they'll merge with the you know original family like i don't know i'd say like they visit the family and then they leave and then they'll visit but yeah this picture was from Savo National Park and you can see the tusks on this elephant so this is an old elephant and i like the gray color on it and this is actually unique to savo because these elephants have to throw dirt on their body to cool down which is a contrast to the first picture which is from amboseli national park and you can see the same thing happens here but now this time they throw mud on their skin 
which is a uh, different color it's clay soil so they do this to also cool their body and you can see the formation <laughs> of the elephants when they're in a herd with the young kids in the middle uh, when i was actually looking at these pictures that's when i realized this is another kid that was i think uh, getting some milk from the mother there but yeah you can see this formation and you know the head uh, matriarch in this uh, herd and most likely the next one to eat is maybe the son or daughter. I can't really differentiate the sexes from this picture. But yeah, you know, elephants are magnificent animals. They're stunning animals. And yeah, this one is from Amboseli National Park. I really wanted to get this picture with uh, Mount Kilimanjaro at the back. You know, the cliche. It's not really, it, uh, it's cliche, yes, but you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a good picture. I give credit where it's due. But I couldn't get that. But I got this now with the animals walking away and I was just like please the skies please clear out so that that Mount Kilimanjaro can come out so that I can get a perfect picture but yeah that didn't happen unfortunately <clears throat> but yeah it just means I have to go back and try and get that picture another time and that's the thing with photography sometimes you ha you need patience and you know to get one picture sometimes it can take you years and years you just trying to find the perfect opportunity and yeah, one day I'll get it, uh, but yeah, not yet. But you know, the animals walking away, you know, elephants, amazing animals. That is the unedited. So I cropped it a bit to, you know, at least fill the frame. And then we move to number 14. Uh, this is a picture of Mount Ololokwe. Again, I've said it several times. Sometimes myself, um, I can't, I really struggle with choosing my best picture. And yeah. I'd say that happens with even if we are a photographer, you understand. <clears throat> but on this, uh, I'd say this picture of Matthias would be, Matthias was our true, was our guide. And uh, during this trip, which I also, all these pictures, I think, all the pictures I've shown here, I think, have an accompanied video. Um, yeah, I mean, he was just standing there and then I, I think... Actually, I think I took this picture with my phone. I didn't even use... I had the camera, but I, I don't know. The lighting was... It was still too early, so there wasn't a lot of light. So I just snapped with my phone and, you know... Yeah, Mount Ololoko is a stunning, stunning mountain. It, I'd say it's the most photographed mountain in Kenya. Yeah, and you, I'm sure so many people... If you're in Kenya, I'm sure you've seen this picture before of the mountain. So yeah, I took this picture, I think, uh, three years ago. So I just went in the middle of the road and took that picture until, uh, and actually, yeah, people used to do that a lot until the Kenha, the National Highway Authority banned people from doing that because people used to park their cars, people used to fly drones, you know. So I, I think it reached a point where people were obstructing their traffic, even though the road tends to not have a lot of traffic. But yeah, I mean, Mount Ololoko is standing and here is another picture from close range. So yeah, I did a video with Collins, who is also a filmmaker. You can check out, uh, yeah, I think I'll, li I'll link his uh, channel below. And yeah, we camped on the top of this mountain. So the picture of Matthew that I took was actually from the edge. Uh, I don't know how to circle that. But yeah, right from the edge, you know, I think I'll leave an arrow that points where we were sleeping. So yeah, a beautiful mountain, definitely. Uh, also a very beautiful hike you should definitely do that uh, this is another picture from the same place you know um very hilly place and uh yeah there was a bird flying there but yeah um yeah i i also like this picture of collins again it was like very early it was around maybe six something am so just before the sunrise and yeah he was standing there and you can see the mountains not really mountains but hills you know uh but uh, at the front is it foreground whatever um <laughs> it was standing there and there was these like mountains i don't know it was just uh again another picture that just presented itself and i really like it and yeah there's one he took of me yeah that which i also love but yeah, mount ololoque stunning stunning place and during this trip we also left mount ololoque we were to go to undoto mountains which is uh, further ahead towards marsabit but we couldn't find any car to take us there and that is the problem with these areas. Uh, the transport is, can be a bit uh, problematic. So maybe there's only one matatu a day. So maybe in the morning that goes to one side and then in the evening it will come back. So it's very difficult to 
uh, you know, arrange the timings of these uh, matatus. But yeah, so we decided to go to Mount Kenya and that's where there is my last favorite picture for this video, that is. This is part one. Um, yeah, I think I'll do part two, uh, another maybe 10 pictures and then I'll do part three, which will be pictures, my best pictures from the UK. Um, yeah, and on these days, now when we went to Mount Kenya, we didn't uh, peak, we didn't go to the peak, but we camped and yeah, this picture, again, this is a picture I must print. I just, I want to have it, you know, just print it and frame it. And it was early morning around maybe 6.30 a.m. The sun was just coming out. Uh, at night I had frozen to death. Um, yeah, it was very, very cold considering we were at Mount Ololoko, which is in a desert area actually. The temperatures go to 35 degrees. Mount Kenya is the second highest mountain in Africa, actually. So the peak is like 5,100 meters high. So, you know, it has even snow. So at this point, you are at maybe 2,000, 3,000, maybe 2,800 meters high. So at night, it was very cold. We were freezing. Uh, you know, I we barely slept. Yeah, it was a very, very bad idea for us to do, to go to Mount Kenya without proper clothes. But yeah, I really like this picture in the morning when I was just waiting for the sun, please come out. Uh, this is called the Roadhead Campsite. You can see the ground cell tree there. Uh, you know, this is trees that grow only in high altitude, very high altitude areas. And the sun was just coming out and yeah, I, you know, just a beautiful, beautiful picture. I really love this picture. Um, yeah, then when I looked at the other side, uh, you know, the peak of the mountain will be behind us, but at that time the weather didn't present itself. So I'm trying to imagine maybe the guys who picked on that day, they couldn't see the sunrise. And, but still, I'm sure they enjoyed themselves. But yeah, uh, on this other side, you can see cooking oil, which we had carried <laughs> to make some sausages and stuff. But yeah, uh, Mount Kenya, again, very, 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 very beautiful place. I'm going to do a full documentary on Mount Kenya very soon because I'm going to uh, climb to the top, the peak, and come out the other side of Naromoro. Sometime in the next few weeks or months, that is a trip I must do. So I'm trying to uh, train for it, sort of, by drinking purple tea. At, at, this, at this point, I think those guys should maybe just sponsor me for this tea. Um, yeah, but yeah, Mount Kenya, stunning, 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 stunning location, which I can't wait to go and... Uh, hike again and that is the end of this part one again part two will be 10 pictures maximum and then i'll do my 10 favorite pictures that i took from my trip to the united kingdom uh you know land being in london and scotland so yeah i'll do that so yeah what do you think what do you think i plan on doing more videos like this because again traveling sometimes is very expensive so during my, my downtime, I think, you know, I can show up videos like this. Maybe I can talk about other things like, I don't know, what do you guys want to know? <laughs> Photography, filmmaking, how to edit videos, things like that. I also want to start transitioning to that side for a bit and, you know, be able to showcase such skills. But yeah, thank you for watching. If you've watched this far, thank you. There's nothing more I can say. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, tell me your favorite places you've been to Kenya or places I've been been to. I mean, I'm sure there's still so many places I'd want to go to. So, yeah, give me ideas, suggestions, and see you in the next uh, video. I I am tired of talking. This is, I've been t <coughs> I've been talking for the last 51 minutes. So yeah, I'm tired of talking. So I'll start. I I'm already dreading editing this video because it's going to take forever. But yeah, again. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.